Do you ever wonder when is a good time to sell your stock or when is a good time to buy stock? It's hard to figure out, like is the price high or low? Well, I'm gonna go through a discounted cash flow model and show you how to value your stock. And the company we're gonna do is Oracle. It's a massive software company. Let's get into the model. So the first thing we need is the market cap, which is 168.4 billion, and then the market price, and then we need the free cash flow. And that's how we estimate the value of a company is we forecast future free cash flow and discount that number back to today's value. And that gives us the intrinsic value of the company. And we divide that by the shares outstanding. And free cash flow is the cash that's left after operating a business. So it's really the lifeblood of a, of a business, the actual cash. Next is the income statement and we're going to look at the net income. And that's the profit and loss for the company. We'll put that into the model. We'll do four years. And then last is revenue, which is just the sales for the company. And I mean, these are massive numbers, 12 billion of free cash flow, 10, 11 billion of net income. They did have a 3.8 billion year in 2017, a little drop, but their revenue looks strong year after year. So these are all positive signs. So it's gonna be easy to value this company because the numbers are positive and fairly consistent. We need to know the capital structure of Oracle because we want to find out the discount rate we need to apply to the future cash flows. And we'll use a 2019 interest expense. They paid $2 billion of interest on their debt. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet for that. We'll go to the liability section. And the current debt is due within 12 months. That's $4.5 billion. And let's see the long-term debt. That's $52 billion. That's due after 12 months. So they pay 3.7% interest on the debt, but interest payments are tax deductibles. So let's get their effective tax rate, and we gotta find a good year. It looks like 2017, it looks appropriate. So they had $11.5 billion of income, and they paid 2.2 billion of taxes that year. So 19% in taxes. So we discount the interest on the debt by the effective tax rate, and we get a cost of debt of 3%. Now we need to figure out the cost of equity. So what's the beta of the company? The beta is 0.86. That's a really low beta. That means the stock is not too volatile. And the cost of equity is 8.92%. Let's get some more information from their financials. We need their current assets. Those are the assets that can be changed into cash within 12 months. So it's mainly cash, but you also see accounts receivable and inventory and current assets. So 2.2 billion of current assets and current liabilities are the liabilities and debts that are due within 12 months. And that's 18 billion. So current assets of 46 billion, current liabilities of 18 billion. Let's get their equity. That's total assets minus total liabilities. Let's get their EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes or operating income. We'll go back to the income statement for that. That's 14 billion. Okay, now we have their entire capital structure. So 72% of their company's debt, the other 28% is equity. That's a pretty leveraged number. So that is a little concerning. So the weighted average cost of the capital is only 4.7% because their beta is so low. And a WAC is a combination of cost of equity and cost of debt. And that's what we're gonna to use to discount the future cash flows by. So we estimated the future free cash flows for four years based off of the financials we input earlier. Then we did a terminal value, which is all free cash flows after year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the WAC and we get a value of the company of $190 billion. And we, we divide that by 3.2 billion shares outstanding. We get an intrinsic stock price of $60. It's trading at $53. So it's trading at 11% discount. So it's considered a buy according to the model. Let me just show you on Simply Wall Street for Oracle, their fair value is 58.54. So it's really close to my calculated price. So our, our models are fairly similar. So let's look at historically, the price has been trading close to intrinsic value for about a year or so now. It was trading lower a couple of years back. 
Oracle is a great company, but the stock price is really based on supply and demand. Now, when people want to buy a stock, they drive the price up. When people want to sell a stock, they drive the price down. Till equilibrium is met and they find a price that both the seller and the buyer agree to. Then there's a lot of other things that people look at when they decide how much a stock is worth. We looked at the fundamentals, which I think is the most important, but there's also technical factors like competition and taxes. And there's also market sentiment, which is really hard to identify, is how people feel about the company and how people feel about the market and the economy as a whole. So the only way to avoid and mitigate these types of things is to hold a stock long term. If you really feel this is a good company with great fundamentals, just hold the stock and you'll ride the ups and downs. Let's look at their financial ratios. Anytime you look at ratios, you want to compare it to the competitors. And you really don't know if the ratios are good or not until you see companies that are similar to them and what their ratios are. So they have a 15.7 PE. I like to see under 15. That's a good PE. That's stock price over earnings per share. Price to sales 4.2. I like to see under 2.2, but we want to let's compare it to other companies like Microsoft to see what their price of sales are. Price to book that seems a little high. I like to see under 3.3, but 7.7, .7, it could just be just how the industry is. Some industries just have naturally high price to book. And let's delve more into price to book. So price to book, it's the stock price over the book value per share. And to get the book value per share, it's the equity, which is total assets minus total liabilities, and that's on a balance sheet, 21 billion over shares outstanding. And they come out to 7.7. .7. And there's, there's a lot of ways the price of a book can change. If the stock price went up, let's just say it went up 20%. Now, the price of stock is at 64. So the PB is nine, which is not as attractive. A low PB is good, that's what you want. But if the stock price went down 20%, the PB goes down to 6.2, so it looks more attractive. Share buybacks was a big way for companies to improve their ratios. Not just the PB, but the PS and the PE. And this is Oracle's shares outstanding for the past 12 years. And, and shares outstanding is a big way that this number is calculated. And share buybacks have been a big tool corporations have used in order to improve their ratios, not just the price to book, but the price to equity and the price to sales. So in 2007, Oracle had 5.3 billion shares outstanding. If it still had 5.3 billion shares outstanding, their price to book would be 10.5 instead of 7.7. .7. So it would be a lot less attractive and that's why companies buy back stock, they make their ratios look more attractive because there's a lot of investors who just go off of ratios like price to earnings. And if they see a price to earnings below 10, they're gonna buy the stock even if they, they don't look, look under the roof of the car and see that it was manipulated. So always look, try to figure this stuff out. I know it's not easy. And also the equity has a lot to do with your price to book ratio because equity is assets minus liabilities. And if we go back to the balance sheet and we look at the, the assets, you can see the current assets, cash, accounts receivable, those are great assets. Those are the most valuable assets. And then non-current assets you have to look at. Property, plan, and equipment are good assets because they depreciate it, so the value is probably appropriate. But there's a lot of goodwill and tangibles. And goodwill, $44 billion of goodwill. That's just a premium a company paid when they acquired another company. You should watch the video I did on, on Discovery Channel. I really go into depth on how to calculate goodwill. But that's really inflating their assets when they have $44 billion of goodwill. And, this, and it's intangible. An intangible asset is an asset that's not physical in nature. A patent, a trademark, a copyright, those are intangible assets and goodwill because you can't touch them. It's not like cash. You can't like sell it to someone for, for uh, something. It's not worth anything except to you and the business. So if a company has a lot of goodwill or intangible assets, that could be an inflated balance sheet. 
And a company is supposed to write down their intangible assets. It's called for goodwill, goodwill impairment. So every year they should look at their goodwill and decide if they paid too much for a company and then write down the goodwill. But some companies may not write down as much as they should because it just makes their assets look good if they have a lot of goodwill on it. It dries up the assets and it makes these ratios look really good. So let's say instead of 43 billion of goodwill, they had 33 billion. Say that was a more appropriate number. That means we'd have to knock 10 billion off the goodwill. And now their PB goes way up to 12.4. So it doesn't look so great anymore as opposed to 7.7. .7. So look, think of this stuff when you look at ratios. Let's move on. Let's do the current ratio. They have a great current ratio, 2.5. So they have plenty of cash to fund their current liabilities. Great ROE, 49%. I like to see over 20%. They're providing great return to their investors. Interest coverage ratio. This is how many times they could cover their interest payments on their debt. The debt is $2 billion, so they could cover it almost seven times just from operating income. So that's a good sign. So the probability of default is 7% within the next 12 months. That's mainly because they have a lot of debt on their books. But they are a big company and they probably could get good terms or even rene renegotiate the debt. So let's look at their ratios compared to other companies because this is what you really need to do when analyzing a, a stock. Not look at the current ratios in a vacuum. You've got to compare it to similar companies. And I've done videos on this channel for Adobe, Microsoft, and Square. So I have all the information in the spreadsheet. So Oracle has the best price to earnings by far. Every other company has a terrible price to earnings. And the average software company has about 30 PE. So they're 15, so they're in really good shape to the average. So if you compare Oracle to JP Morgan, for instance, you may say Oracle's terrible, their PE is so much worse than JP Morgan. But finance companies have much lower PEs than most other sectors. Price to sales ratio. Oracle's in the best shape. Even though they have above 2.2, which is what I like, they're still much better than their competitors. Price to book, they're the best on that. Maybe because they bought the most shares back, I don't know. Then let's see current ratio. Everybody's pretty good. Adobe is a little low in current ratio, but everybody's pretty good. ROE, everybody's good, but I mean Oracle is just killing it in ROE. That's income over equity. That's how much income you're providing to your equity holders. And debt, Oracle is the worst in debt, so that's not a good sign because if if the other companies in their industry also had 60, 70, 80% debt, then I would say Oracle is not doing too bad, it's just the nature of the industry. But Microsoft and Adobe and Square do not have to borrow as much money as Oracle, so that could be a red flag, something to think about. Oracle is a monster of a company, $168 billion, but next to Microsoft, they seem like a tiny little company. And let me know what you think of the video, if you have other ideas, other ratios I should be looking at, and what do you think of Oracle as a company? Would you buy it? Would you not buy it? Thanks for watching.